In this video, I'm gonna be explaining the exact risk management strategy I used in order to pass my 100K challenge, as well as just going through a bunch of things I think every trader should know before going into their own funder challenge. So let's just get into it. So firstly, risk management. What is the safest way to risk your account when trying to get funded? Now it can vary between strategies depending on what your win rate or risk to reward is. But for me, having a strategy with a solid win rate as well as a considerably high risk to reward, this is what I used and would use in the future. So I'd start off by risking 0.5%. Now, if you lose your first trade, you'll be in minor drawdown. Your psychology should still be in a fairly good position, especially in comparison to that as if you had risked 1%. I just feel like losing 1% straight away is just a very bad way to start off. And from here, you'll continue risking 0.5% until you have a 2% buffer on the account. So until you are 2% up on the account. Now, if I had won this first trade, due to my high average risk to reward, this would likely be at least a 1 to 4, meaning that I would be 2% up on the account. And this reaches my first initial goal. The reason that I have a 2% buffer as the initial goal is because from there I will start risking 1% on the account. Now if you go below this 2% buffer again then I'll start risking 0.5% and once you reach it again then start risking 1% you get it. This allows you to risk safely whilst keeping your psychology intact by not allowing yourself to go into just major drawdown really quickly, whilst also being able to pass the challenge in a feasible amount of time to where you're not spending months on months on months just trying to complete the challenge. Because once you get to that 2% buffer, all it takes is one or two trades to then pass phase one, and then another one or two to pass phase two. But then if you have an unfortunate losing streak, you may go one or two percent into drawdown. But this is in comparison to if you just continued risking one percent, you'd be in let's say four percent. And being 4% into drawdown would likely fuck your psychology, I know it would have with me when I first started doing my challenge. And for whatever reason, in my head, being 4% in drawdown sounds so much worse than being 2% in drawdown. I don't know if that's just me, but I'd just much rather be in that position personally. So this is why we lower our risk when we're below the 2% buffer. Now, let's say your strategy has a really high win rate low risk reward and doesn't really throw many setups. I'd still say risk 1% personally, but I'd definitely say never risk more than 2% in my opinion. Because man, if you lose two of them, you're close to your max daily drawdown. And once your psychology is fucked from losing 4% in a day, which it likely will be if you're at a point in your trading where you're allowing yourself to lose that much in a day, you'll likely take another one too. And since your psychology is in such a bad state, it will likely not be a very good trade and it will likely lose. You're about to hit your max daily drawdown. And if you manage that, honestly, you're not, you're just not a great trader. I'll keep it cut and dry. If you hit your max daily drawdown, then something is up. You feel me? Take it back to the drawing board. Maybe go back to demo for a bit. They allow you this fairly steep max drawdown of like 10, 12%. So please use that. Now don't let this discourage you if you have done this before or you do do it in the future. I'm not 100% sure if this is true, but I've heard that the max daily drawdown is actually the most common reason for people failing the majority of challenge accounts. Even if that's not true, you definitely ain't alone if this has happened to you or if it does happen. But just understand that you really need to rethink your risk management, lower your risk. The worst thing that can happen is it just takes you longer to pass your challenge and you just really prove to yourself that you actually are profitable. Next, I just wanna add in some other things that you should be taking into account when trying to pass a funder challenge. Firstly, I'm gonna talk about the pairs you're trading. So have you tested these pairs? Do you know how these pairs move? Do you have too many pairs? All the pairs that I and most of the people in the Discord are trading are fully back tested, slightly forward tested, and confirmed to just like work well with the strategy. Like the full back tested results are in there for people to see. So are your pairs confirmed to work well with your strategy? Have you tested that? Then have you noticed any specifics in these pairs? Is there anything different you noticed when let's say trading EU compared to UK 100? Because there definitely should be. For example, I can say I know EU likes to frequently break major highs before like switching directions. I mean, that might be common, but like as in more so than other pairs. And UK 100 has a habit of just continuing in one direction for like extended periods of time. And no Knowing this allows me to just have a better understanding of the pairs so I can hit like higher risk rewards. For example, in UK 100, if I know that it will likely continue in this direction, I can likely hit a fairly good risk reward. I also know which setups are more likely to hit, so I know which ones are A+, which ones I should and shouldn't take, but yeah. And then finally, uh, are you trading too many pairs? This will make it more difficult for you to know specifics of each pair, and it also may overwhelm you with setups, especially if you aren't quite experienced enough to be like disciplined enough to just like skip out on let's say C setups. Which brings me to my next point, are you only taking the best setups? Are you taking B, C or even like D grade setups? Because personally I want my trades to be A or A plus setups the majority of the time. Now I actually do have quite a lot of pairs on my watch list and I'm aware of that, but that's because I'm trading on the 30 minute charts and looking for a fairly specific type of setup and I also want that setup to be A or A plus in order for me to actually take it. There's really no reason to be taking like C 
or below quality setups. Like that's really just shitty risk management at that point. You need to trade as if your main goal is protecting your capital because this is how a real investor would trade and you want to trade like an investor. Protect your capital, only take the highest quality setups you're confident will give you a good edge on the market and you should be good. But yeah, finally, psychology, just really keep yourself in check. Take responsibility for everything you do. Do what I did if you want, just make a video on every single trade you take and just admit to the whole world if you just traded badly that day. Because trust me, you'll realize quicker, you'll be too embarrassed to fucking come to the camera. You just get sick of just trading dumbly. But now genuinely, there's no real way to like just stop your emotions completely you feel me we're we're humans at least i am i don't know about you but as long as you can just continue improving every day that's all i can really ask of you um you, you'll get there but yeah um like the video subscribe follow the instagram join your discord you know the deal uh peace